Several of you have mentioned wanting to hear more of Steve's point of view, and so Steve has reluctantly offered to uh, give a tour of his office, and I say reluctantly, is uh, Steve's more of a drawer and less of a talker. I always joke around that Steve, um, Steve, that English is Steve's second language and actually uh, drawing is Steve's first language, right? That's correct. Yes, that's correct. But anyway, um, he has offered to give a tour of his office here at Patina Farm. So take it away. Okay. We'll start at the back part of the office and then swing around to the view after that. Um, this is the place where we keep all our samples and files and everything. And it's all made with old scaffolding boards. Um, all the kind of most rustic parts of the house are in here just because I like that kind of thing. It also has all the industrial cogs and all these things that really don't show up anywhere else. Maybe a little in Nick's room uh, in other parts of the house. Um, we also have some of the uh, water series paintings that I've been working on and a couple of the little tiny ones too that are kind of cool. They're sitting on a great old um, oak uh, table that I use to lay out the drawings. And then we've got all these kind of files underneath it kind of keep things organized. I love how you use these, uh, you like to use everything cardboard, which I think is kind of cool because it leaves everything very neutral in here. But, uh, you know, all these kind of U-line cardboard tubes and, and different things, you know, cardboard boxes and it... it cardboard it, folders, folders that they don't make anymore. Exactly. <laughs> I bought every one of them uh, yeah. that they had before they shut down. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just like the kind of background neutral stuff so that I can concentrate on actually what I'm looking at because um, there's enough going on everywhere else. There's a little library over here, just of like some of the favorite books. A lot of the other ones are up in the tower, but these are some that I'll check out every now and then. Uh, and then some things from my dad's studio, little plaster pieces, just crazy collections. Um, over here is the fireplace wall. So um, there's a little kind of thing of books that I might like be looking through or my watch magazines or something like that. And then this is a little uh, a painting that I did and some old sketches that I just pinned up on the wall. And then a cool little collection of stuff that probably I've been collecting over years. So what's, what's the theme of all these uh, drawings right here? These are all shingle style houses and I, these were from 1983. So what's that? How many years ago is that? Uh, 37 years yeah. ago? Something like that. That's a long time. But I was sort of learning how to draw by looking at old masters from the turn of the century before there was photography in the magazines. So I would look at their drawings and then copy them. So uh, a lot of these are from drawings, some are from photographs, but I was you know, working out, uh, just trying to understand how to do these kind of really picturesque shingle style houses. Nice. Um, and this is actually one of my favorite paintings that you've done. Yeah, that's, uh, that's sort of a memory of the Pacific Ocean. It almost looks like one of those sort of fire skies or something. Uh, but these are just like a very dark sky. There's the kind of ocean line. There's the coast coming down. But I started doing these. I started um, almost like we did that uh, Learn to Paint by Painting 100 Paintings. Right. It's in a blog post somewhere. This was one of them, uh, but I got tired of actually looking at things, trying to paint them, so I started painting everything from memory. And the memory ones were a lot better. And so now m most of my paintings are done from memory. So I'm basically just sort of imagining something and then sort of working through till I get it. That's how they, that's kind of how they work now because it's just, I, I detailed enough oriented in my regular job that when I'm painting, I just want to, um, lose myself in it and relax. And then um, for those people who didn't uh, see the, the blog post, which was probably several, several years ago, um, about your 100 paintings, do you want to go into that a little bit more? Like what was the 100 paintings? Yeah, the 100 paintings was, um, I read something about just doing something every day for a while or just learning how to paint by doing 100 paintings. So I figured I'd do 100 of them. I'd start at one, get to a hundred, and just see if I got any better. And so the first couple were just horrible. It looked like swap meet paintings, just the worst. Um, but after a while, I started seeing like a little piece of a painting that I liked or another little corner of something that I liked, and I just sort of bridged off of that. 
Sometimes I would go to the beach and paint on the sand, but that was a real pain because everything ended up sandy. It wasn't great. Um, but you actually could actually see things. And then I got into skies. And then, so I did this whole uh, series of uh, water paintings and then a few sky paintings. And then some, some paintings I just copied, like the, some of the ones that we have in the other place. We'll look at those later at some point. Um, but it was just trying to get good enough so that I could kind of do whatever I wanted to. Um, and then I just sort of dialed in to do these really sort of ethereal paintings. And then so sometimes I do these little ones. Why don't you come over, you can see some of these. So we'll sometimes do these guys that are just sketches of paintings. They're just four inches tall. But if I'm trying to kind of experiment with something, I'll try these little quick ones that'll give me like a bit of an idea I like the little ones because, you know, you kind of get up close to them and you get real personal with them. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like that uh, aspect about them. Yeah, that's, and they, they're good on bookshelves and like in little twos or threes or something. But they're fun because they're not like a huge uh, commitment <laughs> <laughs> when you're doing it. Yeah. Here's one of the other ones that I like a lot that's kind of uh, very abstract, a little bit of ocean coming in and kind of fading to kind of a cloud sky with the horizon gone. Because we drive up and down the coast all the time, there's this memory of, you know, these, these gray days where you just see a little bit of the water and then you see the clouds in the distance and you get this uh, losing the sky and the land uh, together. It's just really cool. What is it about that one? You said that you like that one a lot. What is it that makes you like a painting versus one that you don't? Uh, there's something about just getting a little bit of, uh, you get a little bit of the green in here that gives it a little bit of transparency and I can kind of feel the water doing that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, halfway through, they're always a disaster. You never know what the heck it's going to be, but occasionally they start to kind of come together and, um, it's important not to, not to go too far because sometimes I've worked on them too much and then it just, they're ruined. Um, but there's something really kind of cool about this one. There's a little pink up in the sky. So that'll be something that I'll say, hey, I'll try that again in another one. I like that part up there. There's a few little other spots. So all of them have little things that I'm trying to do and trying to do a little bit with just white caps in the water. Um, but they're more just like abstract color palette things as opposed to, you know, painting, you know, trying to copy the water. But I mean, not realistic. Yeah, they're not really trying to be realistic. They're just trying to be more abstract is what they're trying to be. Anyway, the rest of the place, you've got these big um, uh, antique beams here. Um, and then these doors all open. It's probably 100 degrees outside, so it's not a great time to open them. Um, but all three of these doors open. And then there's a, there's a screen hidden up in the top here that I can drop down and basically turn the office into a screen porch, which is kind of cool. On a nice day or in the morning, I'll maybe do that for a little while. Um, and then there's a little uh, trellis outside and it's kind of the best view in the house. There's a cool view through here that I see from my desk, which is over towards the bedroom in the garden, right through a sheet of glass. I like how your office is this combination of modern and kind of really, really rustic. You know, the, the sheets of glass and, and the heavy beams and, you know. Yeah, it's, it's like right at the edge of holding together. <laughs> you know, I just wanted it to feel like these old, um, like old turn of the century places that had been kind of, somebody had taken the old window out and just jumped in a sheet of glass. Or this was just a porch that was just filled in at one time. I think it's interesting that's the uh, second or third time you've said that uh, a design or a painting is barely holding it together. It, that's, it kind of seems to be where you like to design. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the fun part. <laughs> when it's like right at the edge of something cool. Yeah. Because a lot of stuff is way too tight. Like when I go to a museum and I see a painting and they've got it and it's perfect, it's just kind of boring. You know, it looks too much like a photograph, but when you see like a John Singer Sargent watercolor that is like, you don't even know how he did it because it's so few brush strokes and it's so amazing, then it's like, 
okay, he's got it. Right. Or uh, Fortuny's place, he had those great paintings. And there's something about seeing the sketch in the painting. And I like that in terms of uh, architecture too, you, to see the sketch and the idea still alive in the design is really where you want to be. Because as soon as you start putting too much stuff in it, you just see all the stuff. You don't see the space. It's a little dead. Kind of. A little dead. Kind of yeah. dead around the eyes. <laughs> um, and then over here, this is my desk. Um, where the magic happens. Yeah, the magic happens. It's a ridiculous desk. It's an old uh, draper's table, and I like to slope it, so I throw some rocks under it over here just to make that work. But very, I actually, very high tech here. Super high tech. So I draw most everything by hand, just like this, and then uh, throw things into 3D models on the iPad. So I'm always kind of uh, back and forth between super low tech and super high tech where we're doing it. And then these are uh, a whole series of paintings that I've been working on. They're all kind of numbered. But these, if you look in closely, uh, you can see they're all sort of different ideas. Here's one that's got some cool water stuff going on down in here. Again, with the sky fading out. Some of these different colors that are just uh, like Miami Beach had that kind of color to it. This is a little version of the one that's over there that I was playing with. And then some are just, you know, really abstract, just kind of waves kind of floating through or different sorts of colors. These are kind of cool. I was working with uh, bringing in some clouds up here and then getting that reflection of the afternoon uh, light on the ocean. I really like up that in the one. Top. I think that's beautiful. Yeah, well, if you want it, <laughs> you got <laughs> to make it sold. <laughs> right. We could probably try to do one again. Um, but that's the idea that there, um, yeah, there's something really cool about all these little spots up in there. So I'll probably kind of work on that area a little bit just because I like them. They're, they're a little bit looser. Cool. Why don't you continue while I am? Okay, and then over here, there's. Um, it's the beginning of this sort of sky series. So it's a little more of the clouds in the ocean and just clouds. These are actually kind of uh, memories of a walk in Ojai where you're just seeing the hills in the background. And then these here are something new. You probably can't see that one because it's kind of blown out with the light. But these are um, like a sky series, like you're up 30,000 square feet. Uh, looking out of an airplane at the California coast. So you're seeing the clouds, there's the coastline, there's the little mountains, and then the sky off in the distance. So I've probably got a whole series in me of these uh, sky series things that we'll be working on. And then I'm kind of uh, thinking about like bigger scale things too. Like um, in the studio, we'll probably do like eight foot long ones like this, uh, trying to figure out how to, how to do this stuff like completely envelop you. I think that's gonna be great. Yeah, that's what'll be fun about the studio, having that space to did, work. Did you talk, did I miss the whole talk about uh, I didn't even this mention class? that, yeah. <laughs> so this piece was from, uh, where did we get this, in Belgium? In Belgium, yeah. So we got this in Belgium, we were sure we were gonna put it in the garden and make like a garden gate out of it with hedges and stuff around it. And then uh, we started building and we thought, wow, that'd be cool to just put it in the house. So we just stuck it in the house. It's just old pieces of stone put together. And what's neat is if you get back here, you it starts to frame that um, the, well? the, the wellhead fountain outside. And as you're, and we just did, that's a, a door that's just a sheet of glass. So you kind of, even lose the idea that it's a door and if you're back far enough you lose it like all together because it's kind of the focal point from the other end of the house right i also like how you transition the stone out there too and the and the wood on the walls so it really feels like yeah know. so that's all the outside wood coming <laughs> and the, in and the gardener walk, walking back. there he is coming yeah. back yeah um, but you get you kind of blur that line between the indoors and the outdoors. I think that's really cool. Yeah, um, and then these are uh, a couple more. I think Brooke wants to keep this one. This is... Um, I love this one. Yeah, this is kind of the Ojai series. Yeah. Which is uh, all these misty mornings of the mountains in the background. And there's like a couple little tiny spots where it works, like in here and here. Um, so that one's, these are, these are a challenge. It's hard to do them bigger. 
I'll probably start doing some smaller and making that work a little bit more. Um, anyway, that gives you a pretty good sense of what's going on in here. Nice. Yeah, I think, I think you did it. Okay. Well, that was uh, Steve's version of a uh, tour of the office. <laughs> <laughs> but the paintings are online now, right? Oh yeah, the paintings are online. If you want to see them or even get one to put in your own home, they're all on our website, gnettyhome.com. I'll include the link. And, um, and feel free to ask questions uh, about Steve's office or his artwork in the comment section, and uh, I'll get him to answer. Goodbye from Steve's office at Patina Farm. <laughs> Bye.